Okay, great. All right, Chair, go ahead. The meeting of the South San Francisco Traffic Safety Commission for Tuesday, October 11, 2022 at 5.38 p.m. Please come to the order. Uh, can I have a recall, please? Roll call, sure Roll thing. Roll call, sorry. <laughs> we know what you meant. Chair <laughs> uh, Barca. Here. Vice Chair Malpati. Present. Commissioner Monzon. Present. I think I just let in Commissioner Ewan. Are you? Um, someone who's dialed in. Unknown caller. <laughs> Unknown caller. 650-580-1755. Is that Justin? Yeah, that's that's me. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, we got you. Okay, great. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm uh I'm in the car right now. Yeah, how about pay pay attention to that <laughs> rather than the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> traffic, traffic, traffic. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh yeah, it's okay. I can uh, it's with, with the traffic, I can kind of do both. No, 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 we don't but want. To I will. That. That is, yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh, I know this is a traffic safety commission meeting, so I yeah. better better just be on the safe side. If you get pulled over by the police, make sure you don't tell them you're a commissioner on traffic safety. <laughs> <laughs> it won't work. <laughs> right. yeah. and, and lastly, uh, Commissioner Carboni. Present. All right, all are accounted for, Chair. We proceed. Fantastic. Are there any changes on the order of the agenda? Uh, no. No changes unless the uh, commissioners have any specific items they want to include or any changes they'd like to make. Um, staff is asking that we um, allocate some time at the end for some announcements at, after the items from the commission okay. portion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any public comments? Um, as of 5 uh, PM today, planning staff or engineering staff have not received any phone calls, uh, voicemails, or emails regarding anything on the any items on the agenda this evening. Thank you. Okay. Approval of the regular meeting minutes for September 13, 2022. May I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the Meeting minutes for September 13th, 22. We have a second. Oh, second. All right. We got Commissioner Carbona. Second. Uh, let's take roll call. Uh, Chair Barca to approve the minutes. Yes. Vice Chair Malfati. Yes. Commissioner Manzan. Yes. Commissioner Ewan. Yes. Okay. And Commissioner Carbone. Yes. All right. Meetings are approved as submitted. Uh, now, the, uh, another point is uh, TAC 2209 meeting. Uh, may, may we hear something about it? Yep. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Um, just wanted to acknowledge our good old pal, Jeff Chow, here again with us tonight to go over any questions you might have on the uh, TAC 2209 meeting, um, which occurred on September 28th. Um, we sent as part of your agenda the uh, the TAC agenda, including all of the requests we received from the public uh, during this uh, period. So I'll go ahead and read them out. And then if there's any specific one that interests you and want to discuss more, let's call them out after. So 2209-1 uh, was Del Monte Avenue and Arroyo Drive. There's a request to remove the stop sign at the intersection due to uh, some existing driveway conditions. That is a uh, resident asking for a stop sign there or remove the stop sign. Um, 2209-2 Sutton Avenue, there was a request for speed cushions at Longford and Sutton and along Sutton Ave and at Sutton and Dunman and request for race speed uh, reducers at all of these due to vehicle speeding. Um, 2209 3, Avalon Drive. Uh, there was a request for traffic calming measures like speed cushions, stop signs, and street lights along Avalon Drive. 
um, 2209-4, Maple Ave and Miller Ave, a request for a no U-turn sign, Maple Ave and Miller Avenue. That was some, well, council member request, okay. Um, 2209-5, at Sixth Lane, there was a request for a no parking here to the corner, uh, signs along Sixth Lane to prevent property damage. Um, 2209-6 at Beach Avenue, uh, request for a red curb in front of a property at 430 Beach Avenue to allow accessible property access. Uh, 2209-7 on Linden Avenue, uh, there was a request to remove uh, meter number 12114 in front of 55 Linden Avenue to operate the business. Um, and 2209-8 uh, Railroad Avenue, there's a request for speed cushions uh, on Railroad Ave due to speeding vehicles. 2209-9 uh, West Orange Avenue, request for, a, for crosswalk improvements, including flashing lights, Stop sign on West Orange Drive due to unsafe crossing condition. 2209-10, uh, Pomeroy Court, where there was a request for a painted red curb on both corners of the intersection at Pomeroy Court and Palos Verdes Way due to unsafe driving conditions. 2209-11, uh, Lincoln Street, there was a request for more visible stop signs at the intersection of Lincoln Street and Hillside Boulevard uh, due to unsafe driving conditions um, before work is done later this year. Um, yeah, that was a long agenda, forgot about that one. Um, then uh, there were a bunch of uh, work orders on uh, previous TAC items that have been um, approved. Um, and also there was two items for discussion. Uh, one is a discussion of the traffic history at Pundipero Serra and Hickey Boulevard and Hunapara Serra and Westboro Boulevard. Um, and 2207-B, the discussion on creating an engineering traffic safety newsletter and or performing more outreach on how engineering uh, staff reaches the decisions. And then that was it for the meeting. So um, take any specific items that you wanna discuss or wanna look at more closely, call them out. Yeah, I would like to get a little bit of talk ab uh, about the 2209-5 on 6th Lane. Okay. Is that between Linden and, and Cypress or on the other direction? 2209-5 uh, was the request for, a, um, sorry, let me go back. 2209, the 6th Lane request for no parking here to the corner, right, sign? So um, there were multiple incidents. Um, and as you can see here, cars are parking pretty close to the building on uh, sixth lane. Um, and they park there because there is no visible signage that they can't park there uh, all the way to the corner. And I believe it's resulted in uh, some property damage, like uh, folks uh, dinging the uh, building or causing damages to the building. Uh, so that I believe was the nature of the request. I think the worst one is that somebody had basically almost backed into some some uh, like gas meters. No, I can't be gas meters, right? Um, but yeah, so this property owner is requesting for that signage because um, there has been some property damage observed. Um, there is a... Uh, business right there, and I think that people are parking there to go to that business, which is on the same building. Is the money? Uh, how do you call those money orders business? Mm -hmm. So it might be useful to uh, notify the business to see if they can help to maybe um, relate to their customers that they should look for another place to park. Right. Yeah. Um, just queuing up, Jeff. Um, what was our tax um, decision on this one? Yeah. We decided not to approve the uh, no parking here, the car signs, as um, if you go on Street View or wherever, or you drive by this location, there's already adequate signage around this area. So, um, but yeah, that's a good suggestion that maybe we could notify the nearby businesses if that is the case. I think that would help. 
Yeah. Do they have uh, security cameras there that they could get a license plate of a car that might damage their building in the future? Good uh, question. I, yeah, I don't believe so. So I think that's, yeah, sure. that's something we should communicate to um, the business as well, um, or to the property owners to install cameras there. Um, um, but if I want to suggest the following, it looks like we are, we got to be mindful of the following. Um, I'm assuming that the person that complained is the owner of the building. The building was remodeled uh, a few years ago. Right. And at the same time, the business that is creating this situation, he is a renter from the owner. So I think he needs to collaborate with us, with us to notify his tenant mm -hmm. to find a way to encourage their uh, clients to pay somewhere else. You know, it's kind of like, you know what I mean? It's, I'm, I'm renting the building. I don't want to get my, my, my building damaged, but the people are parking for the business. Jeff, any thoughts? No, I think that those are good part, uh, good points, uh, Hermes. Uh, yeah, maybe you should follow up with the homeowner and the but yeah, our initial tech recommendation, yeah, we have adequate yeah. signage for no parking, so we're not installing additional signs, but yeah, maybe knowing more of the history of who's parking there and why would be good. Yeah, I think I would, you know, later to him and he could help us too, right, to notify the owner of that uh, RIA transfer money, money place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, thank you. All right, uh, other items on the TAC agenda? I have a, some uh, requests more information on 2209-3 um, over on Avalon Drive. Uh, the, the pictures in the materials look kind of serious there with the, um, the accidents and uh, it's a, I guess it's a speeding issue or it's a, Jeff, can you tell a little more about that and what the attack uh, comments were? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, the, the picture does, yeah, uh, uh, has some serious nature behind it. Uh, we did communicate with PD. You know, some of it had were due to, you know, people driving under their influence. So that, that was some of the causes. But we are, um, we did look at the speeds or the, the majority of speeds are kind of above the speed limit as well. And we looked at the accident history. So we are pursuing maybe do a closer look uh, with a, a additional traffic study along that area to see what kind of additional traffic common measures we could provide along that curve of Avalon. It looks rather dangerous from the photos and with the numerous accidents, I guess it, yeah, it really needs some additional attention. Yes, definitely. So yeah, we will bring this back up probably next month once we figure out what, um, once we do a little more um, investigation and um, analysis on this. Great, thanks. I had another one, Chris. Um, regarding the lady over at, um, I think it's on Beach Avenue, 2209-6. Was that the one that blocked her access? I believe it was. Uh, 2209-6. Yeah, she's an elderly resident and um, she needs to get access to and from her, her residence and there's some issues with blocking her driveway. Um, can you talk about that uh, a little bit more? Whatever the yes. attack issue to attack uh, discussion, Jeff? Sure, uh, we brought this up. Um... This is uh, more of an enforcement issue. Um, so we brought this up to PD. Uh, they are aware, they're planning to uh, kind of um, look at this area closer and uh, maybe talk to the resident as well. Uh, so we'll see how that enforcement goes along this area before we, uh, before making any additional recommendations. But yeah, it's, uh, it's more of enforcement when people park along the driveway or along the sidewalk. What about painting the red, the red curb by your driveway? Is that something that's doable? That's something we are keeping kind of a, let's see. Well, we're still thinking about that option. We don't want to pursue that too. Um, we don't want to pursue it. We don't, we don't want to pursue it for, for right now. We want to see how, 
how it goes with enforcement first. Enforcement, okay. Yeah, it just sounded like she's in a bit of a predicament there with she can't get out when she needs to. And Correct. It's kind of really unfortunate because she lives by herself and has no help. So um, hopefully we can help her out. I think that's all I have for now, Chris. Um, I guess one, I'll, maybe I'll just throw one more in there. The, the Pomeroy Court 2209-10 seemed to be a real issue for the, the uh, person who put in the request in terms of visibility at the corner. Um, Jeff, another one to you. <laughs> yeah. We looked at this, we drove it, we drove this intersection. Uh, so PD found you on zero accidents at this intersection. Um, so usually, you know, with those kind of data, we, we don't want, we don't want, paint, well, we don't want paint red curtains everywhere or anywhere. Uh, that's not warranted. So we recommend, you know, um, her if she sees any vehicles parked, because it's, it's, it's also already illegal to park on the corners uh, for the vehicle cult. So if she sees any yeah. cars parked along the corners, you know, she should contact PD for proper enforcement. Yeah, does she know that? I guess, or she will know. That. Yeah, she will know that. We will that that'll be included in part of the response. Got it. Great. Thanks. Yep. That's it for now, Chris. Okay. Sounds good. Anyone else want to look at something more specific? That one item that Dave spoke about looking dangerous was that. Um, I'm not sure. Was that Avalon, Dave, that you were talking about? Yeah, the one with the curve and this. this the first one, 22 and 9 dash three, I believe wow. it was. Yeah. Well, driving too fast and she wanted to put some speed thing on there. Yeah. Well, the pictures got my attention. So that's yeah. why I want to have some more information about it. Yeah. The thing that's baffling to me, and I don't know if it's a pandemic thing or what, but I have seen more reckless drivers all around. I mean, I saw a guy speeding past traffic on El Camino at a busy time it was like five in the afternoon or something where it gets kind of clogged up and he saw an open lane and he just romped on it and sped up El Camino and I I just think you know if we put a speed bump or something everywhere <laughs> well, yeah. pretty crazy in our city but yet you know I I don't know these some people drive without um any common sense these days or they or else they have road rage i'm not sure what's going on but i've seen people speed through the school district parking lot and i i'll stop and look at them you know and they just speed through as fast as they burn rubber and i'm like what is going on <laughs> it's crazy times these days sometimes just a quick yeah real quick response to that. i was on el camino going northbound and over the other day at a red light the left turn lane light turned green and the car, to, I was in the far left lane, not in the left turn lane, but the next one over. And the car on my right made a left turn on the left turn light. And so did the car that was to my left. Uh, so they, and then the car across is making a, a left also. So three cars trying to occupy the same space right in front of me. Right. <laughs> Bizarre. Not bizarre. It's not actually like that's I think one of the most common things you'll hear is that post pandemic, um, every, you know, not not having a lot of vehicles on the streets. And now that there are just everybody speeds. I think that's something that we're, you know, staff is be, you know, being cognizant about that, um, you know, we, we are seeing that in the, these requests um, that people have that impression that our streets are too dangerous because it's, you know, people are driving too fast. So that's something that we need to kind of, you know, look at a little bit more. Um, and um, uh, hey, Jeff or, or Chris, Jeff or Chris, I'm just curious, what what's the collision history on on that part of, of Avalon? Um, I'm just curious to know whether you know whether there's a like a systemic pattern of of speed related crashes or whether this is just a one off. Um, because I, I live on Avalon, uh, not not that particular location where. Uh, where the incident happened, but but I live on Avalon, and uh, just anecdotally, to my recollection, I I'm not remembering any you know serious speed-related collisions, um, you know, uh, in my 
uh, on my block. And, and Avalon already does have quite a lot of speed uh, speed humps. So I'm just I'm just curious whether you know whether this was a one-off or whether there's a pattern of of, of crashes here. Um, because there are, there are already speed humps on, on Avalon, and I'm not entirely sure that adding another one is really going to do much good, um, you know, since it's already been, since there have already been traffic calming measures applied to it. No, that's, that's good for Justin. Uh, let's see. Uh, PD mentioned there was about 11 moving vehicles along that area, so I'm not sure, you know, exactly which area uh, PD um, citing. Uh, I think you know, west of JS, they're, they're kind of giving that general area. So about 11 moving vehicles within the past, uh, moving collisions within the past five years. Okay. So it, not insignificant, but yeah, something we should definitely uh, look more into. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm just, um, you know, I don't know if there's a way to, uh, I don't know if there's a better solution to, you know, to, to this kind of situation other other than more speed humps, but, um, you know, I'd, I'd kind of suggest thinking to, to see if there are alternatives that, you know, that can be considered before, you know, before another speed hump is, you know, is, is chosen as, as the solution. Um, just, just my two cents. Oh, no, hey, thanks for that. Yeah, and I, I think that's uh, what the, like, um, that was the response that was sent to this that uh, TAC will be looking at this specific, you know, uh, street a little bit more closely, given that 11 moving collisions in the area alone. Um, I think, yeah, and even though with the installation of speed speed bumps, um, yeah, we're, we need to think more creatively and how to address the speeding in this area. So it, it's on it's on staff's uh, radar and to do list. Great, thanks. Other items that you want to take a look at? No? Okay. Um, if no other items, then let's move on to our project upgrade, update Grand mm -hmm. Avenue Airport Streetscape. Um, let me actually introduce this one. Thank, thank you, commissioners. Thank you, chair. Um, we, as one of the things that our new commissioner, Dave Carbone, had to ask for, um, some traffic safety related uh, improvements regarding some projects in the area, uh, you know, on airport. Um, so I'll actually share, Jeff, if you don't mind me sharing first, um, the, uh, I'll, I had two projects that were recently approved in this area. Um, first one, we'll take, let's take a look at uh, 40 Airport Boulevard. Um, it is a housing project. This is um, yep, a housing project um, looking to replace or demolish or replace this uh, warehouse. Uh, I believe it was a, a produce warehouse um, that's existing and currently operating, but I believe their lease is expiring. Uh, this is in the same area as the, uh, the Denny and the La Quinta on, on the back end. Oh. Access to the site is through this ex, extra large driveway. Um, and it's a unique site because like the only way to get into the site is to go uh, northbound on, uh, on airport. Um, so um, it's a interesting um, location given that it is by walking and biking, you are within a, about a half mile, less than a half mile from uh, the Caltrain station. You're on the same side as the altitude apartments, so you sh and you you go through the uh, the airport uh, boulevard pedestrian tunnel. Um, just giving you a look at the proposed uh, rendering of the building. That's what you see there. It's about eight stories or so. Uh, there will be 292 units, 15% uh, affordable. Uh, the unit mix range from studio to four bedroom units. Um, there will be 308 vehicle parking spaces and 135 uh, bicycle parking spaces. Um, so again, our general plan had uh, identified this site as an urban residential. Um, and again, this was uh, entitled back in, uh, in July of this year. Um, one of the things that they are looking to do 
um, is, uh, you know, residential projects are not um, not typically subject to our TDM or transportation demand management, um, but they are participating in that as a community benefit and to make sure that we don't have a lot of the residents living in those 292 units preferring to drive first. So given that it's near transit, so it should be something that, you know, folks would choose to do. Um, they're, they're reducing their vehicle trips by 20% and adding 30% more bike and ped uh, parking and pedestrian improvement. Um, let's see, wanted to share the, uh, I'll share with you like the, here's across the street, you'll see the intersection that we're talking about. This is actually for the other project I wanted to discuss with you. So currently uh, the traffic safety improvements relate to um, a couple of things for 40 Airport Boulevard, which is replacing uh, this, uh, this site. Um, one is to make sure that um, people slow down when they're accessing the site. So the, they, this project will improve and, and reduce the driveway width. Um, uh, so I believe like 25, or, uh, 20, 25 to 30 feet to still accommodate like truck traffic that any, uh, any kind of vehicular traffic that goes to access the La Quinta and the Denny, as well as serve the, the residents in this, um, in this building. Um, second is there are slip lanes or like uh, the turn lanes here that will be removed and a new sidewalk extension would be basically rounding that off. It will not remove the, the, the turn lane that is already there at South Airport. You'll still be able to make a right turn. Uh, it, that is not being affected, but what it serves to do is to reduce one more crossing uh, for um, anyone that's trying to get across the street. Um, so that's one of the safety improvements. The other is um, lighting uh, on the way to the tunnel. Um, uh, so that's 40 Airport. Um, the second one we have is 124 Airport Boulevard. Um, double check my notes here. Um, just going back. Chris, while you're looking, is that first project already approved and moving forward? Yes, it was approved uh, by City Council on July 27th. And then, um, yeah, so 124 Airport Boulevard, that is a project that's going to occupy these two sites of the, it's what we call the PS Business parks uh, sites. Um, they are looking to construct two new buildings on this. So right now, this is what you have, like a these, you know, kind of underutilized, underused office buildings. Um, and what's going in place are these two um, seven stories, or I think it's eight stories as well, um, buildings with 480 units. And again, 15% affordable. Um, there will be 560 vehicle parking spaces, 240 bike parking spaces, and like I mentioned, similar improvements. Just go back to this one. Um, um, there are there are these slip lanes going into San Mateo Avenue and out to Produce. Those will be removed in place of like an extended uh, sidewalk and actually completing the sidewalks around uh, the building on San Mateo Avenue and facilitating safer crossings across both sites and, and, continuing, or, uh, and continuing that safe crossing across the way to 40 Airport and then onto the tunnel. Um, what's slightly unique about this one is that in addition to that, uh, like both projects are required to do the new crosswalks, uh, high visibility crosswalks, uh, ADA compliant ramps, and again, sidewalks that where applicable um, the 124 airport project was conditioned um, to improve the lighting conditions on the tunnel on both sides going into the, uh, into the uh, Caltrain station and the other one going into downtown. Um, so that is you know, what, they, what the previous developer had proposed. Um, there is a new developer now that's taken over this project and they will be carrying this design or improving on this design moving forward. 
Um, again, approved at city council on in December of 2021 and looking to submit uh, permits in the first quarter of next year. Okay. Where is the where is the Uber pickup or DoorDash for these two projects? Well, actually, for the three projects, uh, um, it, it would be a... yeah, it, it would be internally. They we um, work with them to make sure that like Uber pickups would be facilitated, you know, on site at each building, um, just so that they're not you know. Because we're we're not anticipating um, passenger loading or any kind of like that type of loading on San Mateo Avenue, for example. And um, with 40 Airport, it make sure you use that internal driveway, and they have a, a specific um, a pick up and drop offs. Uh, you know, like uh, across the parking lot, they have their own surface parking lot in front of like the La Quinta. So that that's where the Ubers and uh, rideshare and deliveries would would happen. Oh, you think like uh, that uh, somebody will who will be delivering food will uh, will park in the La La La, La, La Quinta or what is it? No, 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 not in La Quinta. Quinta. They, they have their own so, building. Right, right. They, so there's a there's a La Quinta will keep all of their parking. No, no tenant parking would be used. You know at the La Quinta site, it's, it's a completely different property. So the, this, the 40 airport project has been designed so that they have that, you know, internal, like kind of temporary parking in front of their door, you know, you know, and access through their interior lot. Yeah. Okay. But I see that you bringing Lada building, a uh, lot of new people, evidently not people from South San Francisco because they will not be able to afford it. But what uh, I don't see is like a safe way or anything which will be able to support the amount of the new people which are coming. Mm -hmm. How you guys would like to solve this one? Because I don't, I don't see anywhere to go shopping still like a safe way or anything, they will be a lot of, a lot of new people coming right. where they will go to shop only. I was wondering. Chris, I didn't hear what she said. There's not enough what to support the new people coming in? Safe way, exactly. Like a safe way. Like safe a grocery, way grocery. A grocery. Like stores. Yeah, so grocery stores. stores. So they can walk instead of driving. I, yeah, I I was going to ask the question if <laughs> Denny's parking lot's always super full on the weekends in the olden times. I wonder if they're going to be fighting over parking there since there's more too. And you're right. I, I have to say, and sound negative, but I don't mean to be, how many more high rises can South San Francisco stand? And, and it seems like the businesses are being pushed out. There's, you know, the... Um, less restaurants and little quick cafes seem like they've gone by the wayside and like up in Westboro where the BMW thing took up I don't know how many city blocks and all those little restaurants wiped out and round table and all that so yeah that was just one of my long-standing concerns is how many more of these huge apartment complexes can the long-time citizens um, stand it seems like it's growing and growing every time. It's like, where are these people going to come from? <laughs> and it is pretty exhausting because uh, we've been voicing it out uh, in every single shape SSF meetings that to be mindful when these new projects comes up to have enough parking, enough uh, green areas and, you know, and grocery stores as well for them because how they're going to carry their food to their apartments uh, and it's just being exhausting because we ask, you know, like it's a very broken record about having a, a, a park on Linden Avenue and we're 2022 and, and the land is still in discussion. However, this project keeps going up with no problem. Um, also was discussed a possibility to have another street that connects Linden Bill with San Mateo Avenue to make sure that all the, 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 the traffic that is coming on Airport Boulevard, south or north, could not be a, a, too much affected. 
So I, I know these ones are approved, but how can we as a, as a, as a traffic commission together can um, have a, 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 you know, can we have a meeting with the city, with the, with the city councils and just have an open conversation, an open table where we, you know, because, you know, it's kind of hard to do, you know, if I speak more, then I become a little bit too, too loud for some people. But it's not about that. It's about that we have a traffic situation. We're going to create more, and it's not growing. It's not growing organically. We're missing pieces on the puzzle. Um, I, I will please ask everybody to 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 let's let's invite, let's go, let's meet somewhere. These council members because they are the one administering the city. You know, we can we can talk three hours here, and it's going to go to a bulk with uh, five locks. So let's open to a open conversation, open table. Let's bring the, let's bring the players face to face with us or us with them. We are representing our neighborhoods. Um, I hope that makes sense or re resonance with some of you. Yes, even way before all of the apartments went up on Airport Boulevard, um, I remember saying to Justin, you know, are, are there going to be enough parking spots? I mean, if you take an average apartment, um, there wasn't even enough for two cars for each apartment. And oh, no, more people are riding bikes nowadays and stuff. And and I just think that may be true, but nobody's going to take their bike to Safeway and buy groceries. And or if um, everyone just it works out to only have like if this is a 292 unit is that what you said apartment place or something i forget how many spots you said were going to be there but it seemed like there was quite a few you know short parking spots for the number of apartments what if somebody wanted to have uh, their family over or whatever there's not going to be enough parking they'll have to walk there or like Hermes said or Uber there or something. It just seems weird to have all these new apartments and not enough parking, you know, for each proposed tenant. And, and just, uh, you know, just to add, a good example is the six lane. The reason that, that, that those clients are parked on the, romp, on the romp side of the street is because there is not enough parking. So if you go five, seven years ago, you can probably find within a, a block or half a block or, or, or two blocks. Nowadays, it's impossible. So they have to risk themselves to get a ticket. And this is very often. I don't know if you guys pay attention to next door. Every single day between third lane, which is behind the Metropolitan Building next to that uh, 200 Linden project, and, and all the lanes, we have the, 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 all the lanes have the same problem every day. So actually, we're as a city, we're shooting, you know, um, we're shooting ourselves on the foot somehow, per se. Uh, I don't know. And actually, we're asking, we're supporting these businesses to, to be successful. Let's just say there's a new restaurant on 207, for example. The first problem that, 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 that the clients are saying, where do we park? They want to go and eat at the restaurant. They don't have a parking place as a, as a customers. So somebody has to reevaluate this thing i don't think that where we're going is going to be easy you know yeah, the customer the restaurant will fail because the customer don't have anywhere to park they yeah. don't come yeah. yeah most of the customer will not come if they don't have parking it's mean that the the restaurant will fail it's mean that another business which will go away I was talking with a tour company that they, they, they move people, so they have events, and they have 20, 30 people to go to a restaurant. Where do they park? They, they can't come. They, they just can't, you know? So all these conversations got to happen at one point. I got to the point, I don't mind paying for the parking, but we got to have the parking. You know, it's like, okay, give me a parking, I'll pay so I can go and eat, right? If that's the... If that's what it gets to the point, I guess, to spend more money. Yeah. But if we don't even provide a place to park and pay, what we're talking about? Uh, I am already the one that I will not pay for the parking. It means that because this is you are paying for food, you are paying for the 
parking. If I will have small kids, you are paying for paying for babysitter. On the end, it's not worth it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it's uh, much cheaper to call Uber food or Uber Eat or something. It means that, but this stuff will not. Uh, the restaurant will not survive on the Uber Eat. It's mean that like uh, if the people which would like eat uh, don't don't have where to park, when they will count it together, it will not worth it for them, even for the young one. Chris, can I make a couple of comments um, or to the chair rather, I guess. Um, regarding the Safeway and the shopping, don't those projects include ground floor retail that might address some of that? No, uh, these were proposed um, without ground floor retail. So no retail, okay. Um, secondly, um, regarding the parking, I don't want to get too, too into that, but doesn't the parking place commission have something to say about parking and am I, am I correct on that? We, we have a parking place commission, do we not? Yeah, you have three of them on this call right now, except yeah, for so, not officially in a parking place commission meeting. So. Yeah, so so I guess Caution. wouldn't the parking place commission have some say as to future parking and parking demand and all that that goes with that? Mr. Dave, our parking place commission is being canceled very often. We cannot even talk. I wish that that, that was supposed to happen today from 5 to 5.30. So I don't know why that meeting was canceled. So. I wish that meeting doesn't been canceled, but uh, we cannot even talk because it's been canceled very often. The other meeting is canceled for the parking commission. It's so the parking uh, place commission, Mr. Dave, is me, Jolene, and 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 um, and Dana, and we are ready for the meeting, but the meeting was canceled. So I don't know who decided, and uh, we've been asking not to cancel it, but uh, I guess I guess you know we have a lot of things to talk like this one that you're suggesting, but I don't know who else we can ask. We've been asking to don't cancel the meetings and it's just been canceling without asking us. Okay, well, that's good to know. I guess the third thing I wanna mention, Chris, um, thank you for the information on these two projects. I also asked about the streetscape project uh, at Grand and Airport. So if yeah. you have some input on that, that'd be helpful. Sure thing. Uh, just uh, Jeff, did you need to share? Yeah, if you don't mind, Chris, let me uh, get it up and start sharing. All right, can everybody see my screen okay? Yep. yep. Okay, hopefully we're moving to a lighter topic. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I think I brought this up to the commission or to the traffic safety committee uh, during design. So hopefully just a refresher to some and maybe a, a new a new project to, to others. but. Uh, this is the Grand Avenue Airport Boulevard Street Game Improvement Project. Um, here's kind of just a quick rendering of the, of the improvements. Uh, just give you some uh, relation to where we are. This is Airport Ave running uh, west and east and then uh, Grand Avenue on the north. So this is the, I think the 76 now gas station on the top left corner, uh, north running towards Brisbane on the right. And then this is going towards uh, where um, Chris was talking about on the left side. So, and the new Caltrain station is on the bottom left. So if you know this intersection, uh, you know, this is a very impor important, very busy intersection with the city. Um, currently there's a, as Chris mentioned, you know, there's a lot of slip lanes in the city. So as part of the project, we're gonna remove the slip lane on this bottom left-hand corner right here mm -hmm. and uh, extending the plaza and extending this curb out to improve the traffic safety um, for pedestrians and bikes crossing this intersection. We're also going to extend this corner out by the gas station as well to uh, shorten the distance that people need to cross this, uh, to cross from you know, the downtown area to the Caltrain Plaza. Uh, and we're also, you know, adding, you know, new striping, uh, you know, high visibility crosswalks, um, you know, separated uh, crosswalk for bikes as well. Uh, also part of this project, we're also going to extend some of the bike lanes that you're uh, familiar with um, from the, I guess, from the east. Well, from the north side of uh, Torres Bridge Lane on the airport boulevard, we're connecting those bike lanes um, from uh, uh, Miller all the way down Grand and onto uh, Baden here. Um, so just, uh, you know, I have a couple more renderings I would like to show you guys. Um, this is kind of the southeast corner 
Uh, you're standing on the couch, new Caltrain Plaza. You know, you can see how the curves are extended. Um, we're, we're extending a curve, you know, any more, you know, um, pedestrian friendly uh, facilities around here. Uh, let's see anything else on this curve? Yeah. And then the next uh, view, we're looking kind of at the gas station corner side. Uh, again, yeah, we're adding, we're also, also part of project, we're going to uh, redo this median, uh, median in front of the Caltrain Plaza and this gas station frontage or along the airport. So new, new uh, shrubbery, new trees and whatnot. And also you could kind of see more um, a picture of the new dual crosswalks with like kind of a medium refuge as well for the pedestrians. Uh, this corner kind of uh, brings all together is kind of on the Pete's corner side. Um, yeah, new bike lanes, new dedicated bike lanes um, along airport and the view from the Caltrain Plaza. And, and then uh, in terms of schedule, we awarded a contract to CF contracting uh, during a council meeting back in June. Uh, you know, in July, we sort of just got a lot of the paperwork done. So uh, we actually sent them a notice for C to uh, get the um, ball rolling on this project with uh, CF contracting back in August. Uh, you know, there's a lot of um, long lead time items uh, with this project because we're also doing some of the traffic signal, mass arms and poles and things like that. So those usually take about four to six months to procure. So we're anticipating a start date uh, sometime in the spring of next year, uh, maybe sooner, uh, depending on kind of the, those delivery dates. And then uh, this project uh, is um, has a construction window about six months. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of just a brief update on this project. Uh, happy answering any question you guys might have. Yeah, yeah, Jeff, um, thank you yes. for that. I certainly appreciate all of that information because that's what I was trying to, to, to learn more about. And this goes from, I believe, Baden to Miller, is that correct? Yeah, the, the project area is Baden and Miller, but most of the improvements are uh, for this inter intersection of Grand Airport. And anything further on Grand um, besides what you're showing in this slide up, uh, up to Cyprus or, or elsewhere uh, near the Caltrain Plaza? Not as part of this project. Um, we are, you know, and there's, a, there's a project plan for, you know, kind of redoing the whole Grand Avenue. But yeah, this is kind of the phase one, I guess, of that, you know, Grand Avenue, um, in a vision that the city might have, but yeah, this is kind of the first step. You know, we really want to improve the intersection. You know, especially with new Caltrain station um, just uh, opened up this year, so we want to get people safely across uh, from the downtown to the Caltrain Plaza. Great. Okay. Great. That helps a lot. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Chow. Can you explain um, to me? I I haven't heard that term slip lane. What that is and what the purpose is. Correct. Um, hmm. Uh, maybe I could pull up a map really quick. So, so currently, um, let me see. Hold on one sec. Just put on the earlier view. This is kind of the existing configuration. Uh, I'll rotate this yeah. kind of so it matches yeah. my drawing a little bit better. Uh, right now, you know, this is what is called you know quote unquote slip lane, where there's a right turn, dedicated right turn lane that's kind of just free flowing into the onto Grand. If you're traveling you know, northbound from airport and you're just trying to make it right onto Grand. So we're eliminating this slip lane because uh, I think Chris mentioned, you know, this is additional um, crosswalk for people across. And then, you know, it's just, you know, people, you imagine free flowing uh, right turn lanes or, you know, people go pretty fast through, through these uh, right, right turn lanes. So we're going to extend this curve out, curve out, if you can follow my mouse and kind of eliminate that lane, but still keeping that dedicated right turn lane. Uh, so that, so people have to stop, you know, look for people before they make the right turn. Isn't that going to have a negative impact on traffic congestion? It might have a little bit, but you know that's kind of the, the, the intent. that's the, the intent, right? Now, we, uh, that you know, right now, like when we have these slip lanes, they are actually a point of conflict where we have a lot more collisions between vehicles and pedestrians and or bicyclists if they're around the area. So by you know getting like you are like an a mobility uh, impaired or mobility challenged person trying to cross the, you know, from the Caltrain station, you, you wouldn't want to have to do it twice. So basically, get across this to the island and then onto the actual crosswalk into the Grand, into uh, up Grand Avenue. So that's the intent: is to provide maximum amount of safety for those trying to cross or bike and those using um, or accessing the Caltrain station. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other 
Okay. All right. I'll stop sharing. Thanks, Chris. Great. Thank, Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Come back to the. Actually, I have a question for Jeff. If 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 I can, please. Yeah. Um, uh, when this uh, project is complete, um, what are the the steps to uh, make sure the traffic lights are um, adequate? Like, for example, a um, few months ago, when the 150 Airport Boulevard opened, the traffic light changed at that corner, and it was creating some traffic early in the morning. How how, how that is going? Because now when that thing is now the other corner when it's completed, when sure. everything is functioning, um, who monitors and, and you know, um, how we can enhance that during the traffic hours, the lights are, it takes longer, but in AM and early AM, um, you know, move quicker. Yeah, no, good question. Uh, yeah, mo mo most of our CIP projects, we usually do like a post timing study uh, after, you know, after construction complete, it does take your residents or people driving that along that corridor um, uh, to, to get used to, right? So, you know, di change different, um, you know, uh, geometry changes or whatnot. So, yeah, we'll take people get used to it. So, we will do a post timing along that uh, intersection once after the construction is complete. Uh, we also, I think this is also part of our adaptive uh, traffic signal system, which kind of monitors traffic on a real time basis. Uh, so th that will help too. So we will definitely work with our maintenance guys and our traffic signal guys on, on getting that tuned up. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Items from the commission. All right. I idea? think I use my comments. <laughs> okay. I have nothing. All right. I, I, have, a, I have a question, uh, Chris. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, last time, um, Aramis brought up the uh, an issue of a 201 Cyprus. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about how to communicate our concerns, or I think it was to the Construction Coordination Committee. Right. Uh, was, was there, I think the chair was going to do a letter to express our concerns. Right. I have not received anything from the chair. So, okay. So, just wanted well, to follow say, up yeah. on that. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, as soon as I get something from the chair, I'll facilitate making sure that our construction coordination group um, adds it to their agenda or discusses that on their next meeting. Uh, okay. And, Great, and um, just uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, uh, chair, do you have that form? Or you you need us to maybe Chris can send us the form again. Uh, sure. Let me double check. Um, I'll send an email in case there's a form that needs to be filled out. But like most concerns, like it's an email to construction at ssf.net, so it could be just a form of a letter. You know. Oh, that's, we don't need to fill up the tag form. It, oh, it's okay. Not tag, it's not a tag request. Right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Understood. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Well, I'll note it just to um, to alert the construction coordination group that there's some communication coming from the commission. Thank you. Okay. All right. Other items from the commission. I just wanted to thank you and Mr. Chow for all the work for this presentation. Um, I will say my past um, experiences with the tax decision seem to be very uh, logical and I appreciate them uh, and believe in their uh, results and recommendations going forward. Great. Thank you for that. Other items. Um, if no other items, uh, just the announcement. Uh, just wanted to. Um, we have some cleanup to do uh, uh, administratively. So we have Kelsey Evans. She's our admin uh, staff. Um, I haven't brought asked her to come to the meeting yet because she's helping correct our uh, pandemic uh, 
uh, deficiencies that since we we started these permissions um, under planning. So um, there will be some emails. Uh, let's see who I think to Justin um, chair for last year and then to Dana chair for this year. Uh, there's some signatures that is required. Um, it's for all of the meeting minutes that we approve. We approve them by vote. So the act, second step to that is actually to make sure that the chair signs it and your secretary signs that as well. So I will sign all of the ones that we have. Um, it'll come through you uh, through DocuSign. So just um, you should be able to just uh, um, you know like click a button and it'll be signed with your credentials. So just this goes in. Uh, same goes for like parking place permission, I believe. So um, um, we'll be working on that. And then uh, we will also be working with our communications team to kind of mimic what the youth commission has been doing, which is to post their YouTube, or these recordings on the YouTube channel. Right now we don't have a specific one for uh, economic and community development or specifically for these commissions. So we're working with them to get that set up. And then all your ramblings will be online for the public to see. So uh, be oh, aware. No. <laughs> uh, that, that's what we're working on. I know that uh, Commissioner Monzon has like told us repeatedly about these things, so, and so we're trying to trying to do something about it. So uh, thank we you, like Chris. We like thank that you, YouTube you. idea, so that you know Commissioner Monzon wants his like you know, five minutes of fame. So let's, yeah. let's Thanks, that. Hermes. I can't crack any more bad jokes online. Thank you, Hermes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so moving I, forward. I, I guess I have to be careful what I wish. No, now I have to. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> You've now already I'm... said it. So like when people see your, the videos of you like, going rogue, you know, they're like, oh, well, you know, he's, he hasn't said anything ridiculous before, so. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. So no. So that's what we're working on. So thank, thank you again, everyone, for being patient with me because uh, it's hard to do this alone. So how how many meetings have we had? And it's just me doing all of this. I've only and I'm 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 bribing Jeff Chow like on the side to make sure that he comes in here and helps me out when yes. Act. So, thank you, Jeff. Yeah. So great. Thanks to Jeff. Cr Cr I'll call, Chris, we'll call him the favorite favorite soon, Chris. <laughs> Chris or Jeff. Yes, Could you send me a, a copy of the, those uh, graphics on the on the airport uh, grand uh, project we just talked about? Sure. Yeah, yeah. We, yes, send we'll, yeah, we'll send them to the entire commission. So just so yeah. you have. I mean, you know, like. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, we should all have that, I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll Thanks, Jeff. Okay. You've always done a great job, Chris. So you're pretty awesome. I'll say that. Thank you for all you do for this city and for the commission. Thanks. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Chris. I've, I've been in your position before, too, with the city of Brisbane. I used to run the show. And uh, yeah, it, it isn't easy. So I definitely appreciate all, all that you're, you're doing for us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, enough about me and how great I am. <laughs> and you all say it in the well, movie. We're practicing when well, we have it on YouTube, so we can see it <laughs> naturally, you know? <laughs> you all say it on the day like Athena is here or anyone from like ECD is around. So, but oh, it will be on oh. YouTube, so we'll send it to them. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have to add my my uh, positive response to, to, to you as well, because planner to planner. So uh, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Awesome. All right. That's it for staff. Uh, I guess we can move to adjourn, cha uh, Chair. At uh, 6 o'clock, 36 uh, p.m. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, have a nice evening. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And Chris, okay. any more high rises? Good night. Let me know, Chris. All right. <laughs> Chris, Chris, good job, man. Yeah, just say no on those high rises. Yeah. No more, more high rises, bicycles, Chris. no more high rises. <laughs> A lot of parking. Have a wonderful uh, okay. evening. I'll see everybody. you. Have a nice Take evening. Care. Bye. Take Take care. Care. Bye bye. Bye bye.